Hey YouTube, Sam here. Well, we're about to do the radiator on the 01 Ford Escape. And uh, somehow I have lost the intro as well as the outro, if that's even what you call it, the last part of this video. So it's going to kind of lose the ending a little bit, but it gets you all the way through to what you need. Um, so anyway, on that aspect of things we're going to start the video right here and the first thing you're going to do is get underneath your car you're going to make sure it has the proper jack stands and ramps i do not trust ramps as i always say so i have jack stands and ramps under this car um and you're going to want to drain the antifreeze out now i have another video on that so you can go check that one out um it's an earlier video that i've done a while a little while ago uh the first time i was messing with this because uh, unfortunately this is overheating again and I knew it was probably going to after the last time because this radiator has been pretty plugged in fact uh, I've noticed the fans getting louder and louder uh, and working harder and harder to try and pull air through there so pretty sure that's pretty well plugged up so hopefully we'll be able to just do the radiator but we may have to do some hoses and things like that as well uh, we'll have to see when we get in there Regardless, you gotta drain the antifreeze out. Go watch that video if you can't find the petcock. And I have also pulled these out from underneath the car. I actually did that first so that it was easier to drain. Although you don't have to have these out to drain that uh, radiator out. Quite honestly, I don't even know if you have to have these out to get the uh, radiator out, but I decided just to go ahead and pull them out to get them out of my way so I can get a better look at things. Anyhow, they have several bolts here there's five or six on each one you have to look underneath there and get them i don't know if i've done video on this or not before but it's very easy to do the only thing you really need to remember or think of is on both sides up behind the wheel well this is the wheel well area this is on the bottom down here uh, on this one on both sides is these little clips that you're going to have to kind of get a little screwdriver behind and kind of pry at it at the same time you pull this little screw thing out of here because it'll just turn if you don't and uh, once that screw comes out you can pop this out real easy so regardless this is fairly easy to do if you can't do this and get these off of your car you probably shouldn't be attempting to do a radio from the research i've done it appears this definitely has to come off so i'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, yank this off of here um, I think I'm just going to bring this whole thing off. And I believe it's probably 10 millimeter bolts, a couple of them. The other side here. Now, once you do this, you're resigned to having to realign everything to make this all work safely. So this is one of those places where I say if you do anything I do and you hurt yourself or something breaks or your hood flies open because you didn't get it adjusted right, I am not responsible. If you don't like the way I'm doing something, don't do it. But, regardless, I'm taking these off. And it would, probably will be a pain in the butt to try and get this all hooked back together. So there's a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter on this side. You can undo both of those and we'll find out from there where we, we need to go. One off over here, one off over here. And if you look down here, you can see right, if I can get the light on this situation, right there there is another 10 millimeter bolt that's just kind of you just got to loosen it it's hooked to a spring it looks like and you got to loosen it and that'll pull up straight up through there uh so we're gonna and go ahead and do like that like i said we just loosen that up that pulled straight up and out i'm just going to set that over the side to get it out of the way for now so uh, we're over here on the driver's side of the car and if you look down over here uh there's a hose that's going in the top here I don't know if that's transmission or what. It appears that somebody has taken this clamp off and put a different clamp on it sometime. I don't believe I did that. Um, so we got that. And then right below that is a bolt that's actually holding the fan to the radiator. And my plan is to try and remove the fan complete away from the radiator and pull the radiator straight out. We'll see if that plan works or not, or if I have to pull more of it out. But I have seen that you can separate the two. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to remove a bunch of stuff uh, 
more than I want to, but right now we're just doing, removing as little as we can, but still trying to get as much out of the way as necessary. We're over here on the driver's side again, and I went ahead and I did a video on this, and I pulled the battery out and the battery tray out. It was super, super easy. I kind of did a, a short but simple video on it, uh, so go check that out if you really need help with that. Uh, next thing we got is the hoses down here. So, the so one, we got the top one off here and it is a tranny cooler line. I went ahead and plugged that up with a piece of plug that I had. Um, now we need to go down here. There's one there and one there. And I'm not sure. I think the bottom one might be tranny, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure which, what ones are what. Uh, one of those is transmission and one of those I believe goes back to the bottle over to the uh, overflow bottle, which it's, or pressure vessel, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then below that, this big one here is the lower radiator hose um, that goes to your thermostat, so. Definitely easier to get it from the bottom, at least this lower one. Here's the other two, will be easier too. Um, get my plan in place and get this thing off of here without hopefully getting too much on me. I don't know how much is going to be in here because this thing didn't drain a lot. Eh, not too bad. that drip dry I don't feel like getting an antifreeze all over me and I'll come back and I'm gonna grab these other two from down here as well this one here and this one here uh, I'm just gonna do whatever I need to do whether it's the pliers or wire cutters or whatever I can get on those with to get them off and uh, I don't think you need to see that it's just taking hoses off and these are on the driver's side is where we're at right now that's the main thing knowing where stuff is now we're over here on the passenger side um, this is the core support radiator support right here and on the top of the radio over here you got the upper radiator hose which is the big one on the bottom and then you got this other one up above that which goes into your pressure vessel overflow valve bottle whatever you want to call it um, so I'm going to go ahead and why those other, that lower radiator holes is draining more, I'm going to go ahead and pop these off. Uh, I don't know if this was the original clamp, but uh, it's just a regular hose clamp there. And then you got those ones I don't like that you have to squeeze on the top one. So I'm going to pop those off and we will go from there. You know what? I'm going to take this top radiator mount off because it's in my way and I'm going to have to get rid of it anyway. I'm going to take this off. It appears to be 8 millimeters. One on the course port, one over here next to the light. like there's one hooked to the bumper here too. That one you gotta be careful with because it's all plastic. And it might have a clip that you might lose or something on the bottom of it. No, that's got a nut there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put those bolts right back in where they go so I hopefully don't lose them. I don't know where they go. I'm starting to get a pile of bolts over there racked up so if you're not good at remembering where things go back and you don't have video, take good pictures and it's a good idea to put bolts back in where they originally came out of and then you don't have to worry about it as much that way. Alright, that gave me room to get to this. Take care of pretty much all the hoses. You got four on the driver side and then I believe two on the passenger side that all have to come off of the radiator. So now I've undone this hose clamp right here. Let's get some 
and white if we can. Stay up there. And this is what's going to the top of the radiator, the lower one there. I'll go ahead and drain what I can out. And that'll just kind of get this up and out of the way. I'm going to remove all these lines and the bottle and completely clean them up. Now I have another video on removing this bottle and actually cleaning it out the first time I did the radiator here, so you have to go back in my videos and look for that. I've also taken the upper radiator hose that goes over to the thermostat and stuff, all that housing stuff there, and I've just kind of moved it back out of the way. Seems okay where it is for now. We will leave it. Um, so I think pretty much all the hoses are off and everything's out of the way. It's time to start trying to move this fan out of the way. And I have noticed that I think there's at least one more bolt up here on the core support where where the hood latch, uh, right behind where the hood latch was hooked to. It appears to be an 8 millimeter. I'm going to unhook that down below we'll have to see what's down there and I'm going to try and remove there's a middle support right here um, I'm going to try and remove that out of the way and also the fan right below where the where the fatter radiator hose goes into the radiator there's a I think it's going to be an 8 millimeter if it's different I'll tell you 8 millimeter bolt there and also one right below like I told you before the transmission cooler line that's on the top of the driver side radiator, the hose that we removed there. There's another bolt below that that hooks to the fan. Uh, I have a feeling there'll probably be more on the bottom. I have to go look at that and see. But right now I'm going to remove those and get them out of my way. To film all this is going to be very difficult, so when I have the radiator out, I will show you kind of where everything goes. All right, and you can see down there, that is the bottom of the middle bar there that kind of holds the uh, hood latch and all that stuff kind of holds together and it's a support for the radiator support. Um, so that right there at the bottom there's an 8mm bolt. That kind of comes down. Kinda I see this. Pull. Um, we got the, you're kind of looking towards the front of the car, radiators right across here and the fans are here and here. Now, I just did undid the two bolts I told you about. The one that was underneath the upper or the bigger radiator hose on the passenger side and the one underneath the transmission cooler line on the driver's side. And it's just those two. And then there's a couple of hooks down on the radiator. And I'm just reaching around here, kind of grabbing a hold of the fan here. And you pop, lift that up, which kind of pops that out. Now, after that, you got to kind of fan dangle it to get it out of your way. And I'm just going to keep fan dangling it. I do think I am going to have to take that, uh, that middle support piece the rest of the way out just to kind of get it out of the middle. But I'm not sure. I might be able to pull this right out of here. I think I'm going to try and get the radiator out. It doesn't matter if I hurt this radiator because it's being replaced anyway. If I have a lot of trouble trying to get it out and it gets caught on a lot of stuff, then we'll change our method. But right now I'm just trying to move as little as I can because the more I pull apart, the more difficult it's going to be to get everything back in place. So for now, uh, I did have to maneuver this fan. I went ahead and took that middle piece, bracket piece all the way out. Uh, admittedly, I broke a piece of plastic that kind of holds one of these uh, hoses kind of away so I'm hoping I can either find that part or it won't be a big deal um, regardless so I'll make it work um, but I got that out and I can pull this further back and I actually pull it further to the driver's side a little bit and I'm hoping and, and I also closed off the petcock I had that all the way open so it was kind of grabbing on some stuff I'm hoping I can now get by most of that. Radiator here, and this is the passenger side, that is the driver's side over there. A few things on the passenger side. We have the smaller one goes up to the bottle up there, uh, overflow bottle, pressure vessel, whatever you want to call it. 
This lower one goes down and over to the where the thermostat housing and all that, even though it that technically thermostat housing is hooked into the lower one. Why I don't know. You got your pet cock here, this is what you open up to drain your stuff out. You got a hook right here, and that is what the uh, side of the fans hook into this hook and that hook right there. Now you also have this right here, which this is why you don't just pull your parts out and just toss them in the dumpster, which this you definitely can recycle uh, and get a little bit out of. If you cut these off, you can actually get more out of them, but that's a different story. Anyhow, so make sure you pull these clips off of here, off of both sides, this has clips. Um, because I'm sure you'll have to probably reuse those. Here on the driver's side, you got your, uh, this is a brass fitting here, which is for your transmission fluid cooler. You have another one of these clips you're gonna have to pull off that's for the fan. Uh, we might have to reuse this, pull this off of here. I'm not sure, there's actually a rubberized piece right here. There's also another one on the other side. I'm sure we'll probably have to pull these off. Um, hopefully you can see that, but there's a rubber piece here. Um, so you have to probably pull these off. We'll see when we get the new one. You have to be careful with the clips. Uh, try not to break them so you can reuse them. I'll have to take a look at that. You got the clip here you definitely have to reuse, I'm sure. Um, we got this is where like one of the hoses goes up um, and hooks into here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one it is. I think it might be the one coming from the bottle over comes down and into this one here. Which then brings us to this hook which is for the fan again on this side. This here goes over to the overflow pressure vessel bottle um, right here and then this one goes to the tranny yet again tranny cooler fluid line and then your lower radiator hose which actually goes to the thermostat housing this one here. You also have this which came off on this side but not that side and it's a rubber boot that's what's going to go in your core sport radiator sport whatever you want to call it uh, you're definitely going to have to make sure these stay in where they need to be I'll go put that in right now so I don't lose it but that is pretty much this radiator it's pretty simple radiator I've seen some stuff where people pull the whole front bumpers off which might make it a little bit easier and I'm probably not going to even to put it in. I barely, you know, kind of went against it. These are stronger than most people think um, as far as radiators. Uh, this one actually is has a little bit of a bend and tweak to it, so I'm pretty sure I know this car has been hit a, at least once in the front end. Uh, here's another thing down here. There's a piece of foam. I would assume that feels like it's glued in you probably won't have to reuse that but if that's not there on the new one you may have to either uh, try and get this off here and get it in there or uh, you know figure something out that'll replace this hopefully that's on the new one all right I think that'll do it and yet again down in the bottom that's where you're gonna have these are gonna be in your core support and this sticks down into there and that's what these two knobs there's a knob on each side just like this that uh, these will go in and that's what holds the bottom of your radiator out down so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer everything over I'm gonna go ahead and also hook it back up if there's any tricks or problems or anything that arises I'll come well, back and tell you otherwise it's here. here and although I was correct, hurt the new one, correct that it wasn't didn't come with these plastic or rubbery police pieces here so I'm gonna have to put those in there is a spot to, put, to replace that so I'm gonna have to pull this off and replace those it did actually come with these right here for those so I'll pull these off and keep them for another project down the road um, it has the transmission cooler line thing here I need to read this because it does say something here uh, but anyway I'll deal with that later it, this is kind of strange it's got like an extra little piece here that's not on this one so I'm thinking this must work in more than one type of situation so I am gonna oh, luckily I have a uh, rubber mat down there but anyway I'm gonna have to screw that on and make sure these are good and tight and where they need to be um, all in all though they they appear like they'll still but work the same. The big thing that surprised me is it doesn't have the foam piece down here on the bottom. So I'm going to have to uh, pop the foam piece and these rubber pieces off of here and transfer them to this one. But all in all, everything else looks the same. 
The diameter of holes look the same, where everything goes looks the same. It's got the hooks and the places for the hoses. Uh, this is a little bit different here. This is just for doing a finger, so um, I don't like that as much. I like that I can get on that other one with a wrench if for some reason this is being a booger. Um, but you can always get a pair of pliers up in there hopefully and, and do that. So anyhow, all in all, I'm fairly happy with this. Quite honestly, I don't remember where what I bought it for. Um, it was on Amazon. Probably the cheapest one. I'm not sure if I went the cheapest one or if I, you know, went with one that had a little different name. I can't honestly remember. But it, it'll it do the job for now, I hope. Um, if there's any problems in the future, you'll know. Alright, and I decided to throw this in here. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to wind up at. But, uh... These clips that hold this rubber thing on, I've got some needle nose pliers. They got had a busted off tip, so I ground them down. So a real pair of needle nose would probably work better, or at least a longer pair. But these get in there, and you can squeeze that little clip. It's got like kind of two ears on it. And then I got my handy uh, clip tool here, and I'm just kind of pulling down on that and squeezing on that clip. And it came out. And actually, I lost this one. This one must have came through the rubber piece here. It's still in here. So, anyhow, thought I'd show that to you because we you definitely need to uh, reuse well, these. I came back because I wanted to show you it's Spectra Premium. That's who sent it here. It says insulation instructions insulation instructions all right so i don't know if maybe i was supposed to go online but i can't get on that anyway but anyway what i was going to say is this just talks about don't uh cross thread these and to refer to the instructions inside for how to do this and unfortunately i mine did not come with any kind of instructions inside so I don't know if I need to just thread these on here and tighten them down or if I actually need to put some sort of sealant on these. But these have a flare fitting on them similar to plumbing. So quite honestly I don't believe I need to put any kind of thread locker or anything on. Or not thread locker but um, any sealants or anything on it. So I'm not going to. So... Therefore, you can choose to do what you want to do, but I thought I'd just kind of show that this is the this is the radiator I got, and it didn't come with instructions, but uh, I'm not going to do anything other than tighten those down on there unless I can uh, find something else saying I need to do different. Alright, YouTube. Uh, a couple things here. I went ahead and I got it in here. Uh, should have probably set the camera to the side, but it was fairly uneventful. Because I noticed this was kept falling forward. I was having, I knew I was going to have trouble with that falling forward and getting into this. So I just found a couple spots through here to zip tie this here and this here kind of at a bit of an angle, cocked like that, and push back as far as I could get it. And uh, then I pulled on this right here and just took my other hand and brought it right down inside here so um, that actually worked very well I didn't nick or scratch any of the fins on the thing and it's down in there on both sides so now I just gotta put the fan back on same thing lift it up put it in those um, on each side the little spots where it pushes down onto and then bolt that up and start putting it all back together well, I don't know what changed between if this radiator might be a little bit thinner or something. I really don't know. Everything's going in fine, and I actually kind of looked down in here and figured out that this piece here, this middle piece, appears like it'll go down into here easier than when I brought it down up from the bottom or down from the bottom. Yep, that popped right in there. So, oh, and then it fell down. So, I would say probably bring it up from or down through here rather than pulling it down the way I did before yeah 
or at least try it that way first if you pop it down and then well, bring it up. there you go, such as it is. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you were able to get something out of it and it wasn't too long for you. Uh, all right, this is Sam, Jack of all, and Master None. You all have a good one.